Thank you very much. And please remain standing as we administer the oath. Do solemnly swear that my testimony that I have come to give to TRC of Liberia is the truth and nothing but the whole truth. So help me in God. Thank you for coming and on behalf of the Commission we want to say welcome and express our appreciation that you have taken up time of your busy schedule to honor the invitation of the Commission to come and contribute to the peace and reconciliation process in our country. As you know, the TRC grew out of the Accra Peace Accord, and since the last two years, consistent with the mandate of the TRC in the TRC Act, the Commission has been conducting a number of activities which has led to where we are. This public forum is happening because we believe that people make history that after the end of a protracted conflict, we who are survivors are the ones who embody the experience, the truth, and the reality of our past. And to pursue reconciliation, it is important that all of us understand what happened, the role we play, what needs to be done to sustain the peace in Liberia. As a prominent Liberian citizen, you have yourself had a public life which entails the period 1979 to 2003 that the TRC is covering. You were a member of the Armed Forces of Liberia before, a member of the National Patriotic Front, and then a former president of this republic. It is against this background that we thought fit to invite you so that you can share your experiences with the Liberian people so that the myth the realities, the falsehoods of the past can be understood and clarified and we can have a sustainable basis for reconciling amongst ourselves as Liberians. So thank you very much and we say you are most welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, sir. Uh, At this time, I will introduce commissioners who are present yes. and then following that, you can move into your presentation. Thank Commissioner you. Sheikh Kafuma Kona sits at the right end of the panel. Next to him is Commissioner Per Brambu. Next to her is Commissioner Umu Sila. And on the left is Commissioner John Stewart. Next to him is Commissioner Gerald Coleman. I'm Jerome Verdier. Please say welcome. It's all yours. And, uh, <coughs> uh, thank you. Uh, very much for inviting me to come to this uh, to commission, and I will say uh, thank you also. Now I follow you closely, and TRC is not strange to me in the sense that uh, I have been listening to you, listening to witnesses here that have testified, and uh, I appreciate uh, everything that have gone on here. And I'm also happy that I'm here today, more especially to you, the chairman and the commissioner. Uh, I will say nothing but the truth. And as a uh, former president of this country, I serve as uh, adjutant general of National Patriotic Front of Liberia, uh, inspector general, then Liberia ambassador to Libya and Tunisia.
Russia and lies to become a president of this country, of this beloved uh, country. Uh, I joined the National Patriotic Front of Liberia in uh, 1985 in Côte d'Ivoire. We all fled this town in 1985, when it was so difficult on my trap, more especially Gio and Manu, there was a conflict between uh, the late uh, General Kuyongpa and uh, Samuel Kanyendo, then the president of this country. And that really drove out of here because I have a connection with uh, Samuel Kuyongpa, being a Gio man, being my cousin. And uh, we were all driving from here, and I went into Nimba and on to La Côte d'Ivoire. To be precise, we were in Côte d'Ivoire in a village called Benwe, that's in Danana region, where we lived for about a few months. And one afternoon, a fellow came from Abidjan, called Godfather, African men, to be precise, African men came and uh, group fever us together to inform us of a man who is called Charles Taylor. He's trying to uh, help us cross back to Liberia and remove the government of Samuel Kanyendo. He pitted our condition. We have been suffering. We, 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 some of us have been cutting butchers for people cleaning into cocoa farms and doing all kinds of jobs just to survive. And we all accepted. We were about 22 in a group that accepted to go with him. So wherever we were going, to come back to Liberia and remove this government. So we, we agreed, and that took us about a week searching for other friends in, uh, in the various villages around Danane. But we were able to get to get in the 20, and 20 of us left and went to Abidjan and on to Wagadugu. In Wagadugu, we based in Wagadugu in a place called Po, and this Po is closer to Wagadugu. It's a military base. But then we went on to another village where we were like a secret place. There was a little conflict in the town between. Um, Thomas Sankara and Bless Navari, but we didn't know what was going on. But we were to, taken to a secret place, and while we were there for a few weeks, and on the Thursday, I can not remember the day to be precise, and we were taken to the airport in Wagadugu to a plane, a Russian plane, and the pilot of the plane came down, and some other men of, of Buknabi Army and said that you people are going on to Libya. We didn't know this before. We thought we were going to stay in Wagadugu and train as, 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 as uh, commandos. But then we agreed and we got we boarded the plane and the plane took off for Tripoli, Libya. And uh, we, we, what was that? The date will come later. And we went into Tripoli and we were taken by a bus from the airport to a camp called Tajura Camp. This camp is of an old uh, American Air Force base while they were fighting in Vietnam. It's, it's a near the beach, some kind of beach uh, very close to the city. And uh, that's where we were. And uh, after a week or two, some officers of the uh, Libyan army came and said, well, uh, the group is small, and we cannot just train 22 men to fight in a whole country, a whole army of a country. You people have to be here and wait here until whosoever brought you here will come. At this time, we got news that uh, Charles Taylor was in jail in Ghana. And while we were in Wagadugu, who we saw was Agnes Taylor, Godfather who took us there, and the two first commanders we had, they were Copa Miller and Augustine Wright. Those two men we saw, they talked to us, and 
day when uh, Agni did not go to Libya with us. It was Kuban uh, Miller and uh, African men that went with us to Libya. So we were there waiting. And it took about a month or two. So this fellow who took us to Libya now, Kuban Miller, who was supposed to be our commander, one night he called a meeting. And he said that uh, it doesn't make sense to him to come all the way to uh, Arikari, uh, Libya to train for a conquer man. And what is our decision? He said, look, what we should do now, is, you know, we have to name this uh, organization. At that time, the organization has not been named as National Patriotic Front of Liberia. We didn't have a name to it. So he said, what I would do is that uh, we give the organization a name and we can recruit we can send back home for our brothers to come and join us. But uh, because this man who's supposed to be our leader has, is not coming, and we are just wasting time in the, in, a, in the desert here. But then I refused. My point of argument at the time was that um, Godfather told me earlier that uh, Charles Taylor, who was supposed to be the head of this organization, I married a woman from my village. I'm from Tower Town, Lima County. So I was a little bit impressed by that. So I said, well, since this is the case, I have to stick to this man who had married my girl from my hometown. So then to, to deviate to another person who I, I, I don't even know much. So that, that, that didn't go down well with uh, Copa Miller, who was then the commander. He said, well, the, what I would do to you is that since you refused to accept what we are saying, we will have to call the Libyan's authority. You are an agent for some of your though You have come here as a spy. And you will not be in this group. I thought he was joking. One evening, a military police jeep came and they asked me to get on board a jeep, and I, I did. And we went on to a place called Mantaba Camp, and they took me away from the group. I was there for about three weeks. I've been fed properly, you know, I was sitting. I was sleeping well, it was a comfortable place. They in the army camp where we were. After the three weeks, one weekend, the brother of Charles Tiller the late Batu Taylor came from Wagadougou. And he was looking for me and uh, he was directed to where I was in my apartment. He said, oh, Moses Black, what are you doing here? I said, well, I was brought here by Copa Miller and Augustine Wright that I was spying for Samuel Kanyan Do and uh, it was not necessary I stay in the group there with them. While I was sitting there, he came, he said, well, we are not talking now. We will talk later tonight. When we go to eat, I will tell you why I'm here. Then we went to dinner, and he said, well, he was sent there by his brother, Charles Taylor. Charles Taylor is all a Jew. He has left Ghana. He is now in Wagadugu. He saw a way coming. But he was asked to come and inspect. He hearing some funny news from the base that the people are trying to rebel against him. So I said, well, that I do not know what I said was changing the name of what we are here and changing it to another person which I disagreed. Then he said, well, let's sleep over it the, the next day. The next day he left and said he was going to the camp where we were, because there where he went. He went and met the people in the camp. He was there for about three days. Later he returned to uh, Mataba, where I was. And he said, well, look, we will have to wait here. We, 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 I'll wait here with you. Uh, my brother is on his way and he will be here soon. We were there for another week. He was not coming. So I asked him, I said, well, I will make a decision. I don't talk to Libya, that I mean, the Libyan authority that I go back home. I go back to Cote d'Ivoire and find something else to do. Because I'll be wasting time. The group has denied me. And they are saying that I'm inspired. Uh, my life is in danger. And this place is very far from where we were, where we are from. And he said, no, do not, do not go back. Stay here, my brother will come. 
that evening, luckily for me, that evening the, the Libyan, one of the commanders came from the base. He's uh, looking for who was Moses Blah. I said, Moses Blah. He said, well, let's, let's go to the headquarters of uh, Mataba. Later I'll tell you what Mataba is. Well, Mataba, while we are in Mataba, you will be waiting, expecting the Charles Taylor will be there. They are taking to another apartment, I mean a hotel. So we went to the hotel, that's where I met him. He said, oh Moses, you are here my very first time to see your uh, former president Charles Taylor. He said, what happened? Why you are here and you are now in the training camp? I said, Cooper Miller and Augustine Red had asked that I came here as a spy for Samuel Kanyan Doe. So uh, they are taking me in from the camp and now I'm here. He said, no, he laughed and he said, no, this is not true. But uh, tomorrow morning we are going to the camp at Tajura where there will be a big investigation. And in the morning we went. We went to Tajura. Uh, there was a roll call, everybody came. We were about 22, as I said earlier. The group has now grown up to uh, full size military grouping. So he said, well, uh, he told uh, Kuba Miller, he said, well, I heard what happened here. And why coming from Wakaduku? Uh, I, for, I forgot to mention this. He brought with him one uh, Aze Musa to be the commander in place of uh, uh, Kuba Miller and Augustine Wright. So while we were going to the camp, and we took Aze Musa with us, but I didn't know his intention at the time. So after the meeting in the camp, he said, look, now this is my organization. This organization is called National Patriotic Front of Liberia. And no man, no man will change the name of this organization. I'm the leader and nobody else. And he said, look, Aze Musa is your commander. Moses Bly is an adjutant responsible for records while training. And I'm taking with, with me you, Copa Miller, and Augustine Wright. The day after, he took them with him to Wagadugu. And we were in the camp, running the camp. And uh, we were, they were bringing trainees in group. We have the first group. Group one was 22 men, which I'm part of. Then the second group came, 47 men group came. Then the 37 men group came. We were named by the group that you, 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 you come in. Then uh, we have, the last group was about 36 men group. Training was going on very, very fine. We were in training, we trained about a year and a half in Tajura. Then something else happened. As a Musa, our commander became very aggressive, very, very aggressive, very authoritative. So they, they training the men, the soldiers got annoyed. And they said, well, they are not slaves. They have gone to Libya, their own will. They were not bought by anybody. So the treatment was very harsh on them. They were stopped to train. And they did stop when they stopped. And, and it was not good. The Libyan became concerned while the Liberian was not training. And he called me, and they talked to me, and they, they could get to me, and then Aze Musa, because Aze was very, very aggressive during training. So I told them where well, there was the dissatisfaction among our men, and they decided not to train. And then they asked, that, okay, it should go on as that, and they have to send for President Taylor to come. Taylor to come at and he was just a rebel leader. You are leader Taylor, we have to come then you can investigate that matter among yourselves. And uh, about a week time, Attila came, and there was a big bull seller we investigated. Then he decided again that he's taking Aze Musa with him back to Wagadugu. And I will stay in charge as commander, adjutant, and commander, base commander in Tripoli. The position I held until the training ends. While I was there as commander and adjutant for training, training has ended. And we decided to send the men back to, to, 
to Wagadugu and then pre prepare for war in Liberia. In coming back to, like, to, to Wagadugu, we were coming in stages and we went. But then the satisfaction came again. The men said that uh, while we are not coming together and people are coming in groups, one night there was a coup against me. The, the men planned that they would have to murder me and bury me in the sand because there are other people gone already and the other groups are staying behind. It could be that until I have sold the people and we are eating the money, they are sold the trainees to Libya to fight in charge and we are taking the money. Since I'm there, I will, I will die for the money that till I have taken. So the MP commander under my control at the time came from the meeting and pinched me. He said, look, I got a very, 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 very dangerous uh, information to give you. I said, what is that? He said, well, look, tonight by 4.30, if you come down to call to some of the men for roll call, something will happen to you. You might not survive it. So I said, why? Then he explained what was the plan, what was discussed in the meeting. So I sat there, and I didn't know what to do at the moment. I thought for a while, and I said, fine, I know what to do. I called another fellow. I have uh, the MP commanders. Then I have another commander for security. Then I have another commander again for control. There were three, you know, able-bodied men I had there. You know, they were for that purpose to control the men. As you know, it's a military training. We have to be very rough. So I ordered them. I said, look. Go into the buildings, in the various rooms, and arrest the name that are giving me. I tell them, arrest these people and bring them to me. But first of all, let's investigate. No. Let's investigate if the information is correct. Last, I went down myself creeping to the, the stairs that we were under. And I saw this man, Robert Monsalier, one of the trainees, were already there with an iron bar, waiting to mock me early that morning if I come down to call for assembly for the soldier to go online. But when I saw him, really, he was like, sleep, I carried him, he was sleeping. So I came back <laughs> up in my room and, and, and decided to wait and call for my men. So I told my men to go down and arrest him and take anything that like evidence that, that like what I said, that you were going to mob him with a stick or an iron bar or so. So they went and have him arrested, brought him to me. We were on the investigation till morning and other people came forward and they all admitted that they wanted to do this because they were delaying, everybody left. Why is it that they are staying in Libya? So as I order the, the Libyans to come to my aid to have them arrested because I was afraid and have them detained. The Libya refused. Why the Libyans said that well, you have an authority as a commander here. You have all right to detain your own men. We will give you protection. And what I did was I uh, order everybody to go to jail. There about 13, 15 of them. I have them detained. Then I call to uh, our leader, President Taylor, in uh, Ouagadougou to come because uh, I'm afraid I could be killed for nothing. Exactly, he came. When he came, he told the man, he said, well, you, we have to go back as we came. We are going back by stages in groups. We didn't come together. Now why is it that you people are, being, are causing problems here for the commander? We said that, that that day he talked with him, all the troublemakers, those who have uh, put a contention that they were not going, they were all brought, taken with him to Wagadugu. And lastly, I took the last group with me to Wagadugu. And uh, why in Wagadugu? We were taken to a place, a camp. I was in the camp. I was uh, an adjutant responsible for records. I was in the office in Wagadugu. 
and the men were taken to a camp. What we did, every week we, we, we go with food supplies to them, get medical equipment for them, we let, make sure that doctors will see them. At the same time, we are taking some men to come to the border of Liberia to inspect how do we enter to Lib into Liberia? We had some intelligence people that we brought. We, oh, we were already trained for that purpose in, in, uh, in Libya. And they were there already in the border waiting to find ways for us to enter. Then uh, at one point, uh, President Taylor said, uh, what, what, what you will do, uh, Moses Bla? You are not going. We are brought to attack Liberia. You will have to go back to Libya. Send the Libyans are promising us to give some weapons to help start to enter this country. You have to be there to pressurize them to make sure that those things are delivered on time. I was not around the border during the starting of the war that night. I was in Libya. So I was in Libya, no news from Taylor. No news from anybody, isolated in, uh, in, in a place called Mataba, as I said. And one evening, it was on the 1st of January. It was at the end of the year. Then uh, January the third, a group of Libyans came. Half our delegation came. They were a little bit angry. And they said, oh, uh, uh, Moses, we are hearing from radio that Charles Taylor has attacked Liberia already. They are fighting in a place called Butu. Do you know what Butu is? They came with them, they brought up with them a map, a, a map, a map from Liberia. So I said, ah, Butu. I said, but Butu is very far from Monrovia. And that discouraged them again because showing them Butu on a map and the distance from Butu to, to Monrovia is not an easy war to fight. So they said, but this is a, a mistake again. We are not giving Taylor to go ahead to attack Liberia. We were telling him to wait. We are doing the groundwork. Why is it that he has to go to attack at this time? But anyway, what we will do right now is that we are talking to Blaise Campari in Ouagadougou. Whatsoever he has, he is Amory, let him try and sends few materials to Charles Taylor to start because he has started the war already and we cannot wait. So then you have to go to Wagadugu to arrange that or you have to be there to see and supervise that. Then we will have to call you back. When I got to Wagadugu that afternoon, I mean the next day, and I went to a fellow who was responsible for this operation he said, oh, those things you are talking about left last night. They are all gone. It means that you have to go back to, uh, to Tripoli because those things are not here. The equipment we have got ordered from the Libyan authority last night, and we are empty everything here. They are taking it with them. But I did not go because the Libyan state, I went to the embassy and the state told me to wait to hear from Tiller before I can leave. I was there for about like two weeks. The war progressing, the war progressing. I hearing news that some wounded people have been brought to Abidjan and one of them having to call me and said that the war is not easy and we are really fighting. We know what can we do? And we are out of ammunition. That afternoon, Taylor came to Abidjan. When Taylor came, he said, well, what you would do? So that afternoon, he took me from Ouagadougou. He asked that we should go to Abidjan. And we went to Abidjan looking for arms and ammunition. He has a contact with some people that the late uh, Kofi Kona was the defense minister of Cote d'Ivoire at the time. And uh, he said, look, we have to go to see this man. He has talked to Ofe Boanyan later, and we must see this uh, Kofi Kona. And we went to Kofi Kona, we were introduced, 
as a man who would be there to help transport whatsoever material they would have on ground for us. So he said he was not wasting time. He had to go back to Ouagadougou and waiting for the Libyans. They also promised 